I'm shocked. I can tell right away that um, this one's sharpened and this one is sharpened. I'm actually like surprised by how good it looks. That looks really natural. Would you pay $80 for software that did that? I mean, yeah, I think if I was going to be restoring a bunch of family photos, I would do that because this looks so much better. And I definitely think that someone could get something like this and do like a, a photo restoration service because it sharpens it so much. Impressive. This is the biggest breakthrough I've seen in a decade in photo processing. I found software that will really make your pictures be far more detailed, not clickbait. This is artificial intelligence and it actually works. I tested the three top upscaling applications, Lightroom Classics Enhance, On One's Resize, and Topaz's Gigapixel AI. And I only recommend one of them, but it is absolutely amazing. Before we get started, I just a quick plug for Northrop.photo for Father's Day. You can use the coupon DAD20 and get 20% off of our photography education, including lots of software processing, but also things like the professional portraits training series using flash and the art and science of photography. Let's get right into it. I want to cover number three because it's really been hyped and it's a very popular app. And it's cool because most of us use Lightroom Classic anyway, so we kind of get that feature for free, but it's not very good. It's certainly not everything people have hyped it to be. I did a whole dedicated video about this, so I'm not going to cover it in great detail, but what it comes down to is you can use the enhanced feature to quadruple the resolution of your images, but you don't really get any extra detail. I'll quickly demonstrate this and why people think it does work. Here's the photo from our Photoshop book cover. It was taken with a 50 megapixel 5 DSR. And indeed, if we zoom in, we see pretty crazy amounts of detail here already. In Lightroom, I can right click it and click enhance. I have super resolution selected. And if I click and release, I can switch between with and without enhance. And indeed, when you look at with enhance, it looks significantly better than without enhance. But the trick Adobe is pulling here is that without enhance is shown pixelated instead of using the usual bicubic smoothing that would happen when scaling something up. I'll do the enhance so you can see the real difference. Looking at them side by side, can you even tell which one is enhanced? I can't. Everything looks exactly the same. For all these apps, I tested over a dozen different pictures, including portraits, landscapes, wildlife photography, high resolution 50 megapixel original images down to little 800 by 600 photos, face ISO, high ISO, low light, everything. So I could create a complete picture of where each of these apps succeeded and failed. The Adobe Enhance tool succeeded in literally none of the scenarios. The good news is I have it because I use Lightroom anyway, so it's completely free, so I can't really complain about it. But have I ever bothered to use it? No, I never have. So let's move on to number two. The number two app is On One Resize AI, upscaling app that actually works. You can see a noticeable difference here. If you decide you like it, you can use our link here, sdp.io slash resize, and we'll get a little affiliate kickback just for recommending them. I also got them to create a custom coupon for you, 20% off with Northrop 20. I have links for everything, so this doesn't make me lean one way or the other. First, I'm going to show you the app and then I'll show you the results. Here's an old, really low resolution picture at 800 by 450. First, you'll adjust the dimensions of the picture to be resized. So let's make it six times bigger, 4800 pixels wide. Now I switch between the original and the scaled image. And at this resolution, I can't really see much of a difference. As I zoom in, you can see it uses the same trick that Adobe does, showing the original image as pixelated so that the difference seems more extreme. You can also use this opportunity to apply sharpening over here, though just about every photo editing app has sharpening built in, so that's not really anything unique. Let's jump into Lightroom and look at the exported pictures versus the original pictures to see how much of a difference it makes. This is the original on the left and the enhanced version on the right. Let's zoom in. You can see the enhanced version does show more detail. In particular, look at the way these letters are rendered. It detected these sharp edges and did a better job of sharpening it. Her face here looks quite a bit crisper in the resized photo. It did a good job of scaling up this jewelry and this fabric. Overall, it's a good result. However, with pictures of people, I found that I had to change the rendering method to use fractals instead of their default method. I'll show you why. In the resize app, here's where you can change the method and you can see you can fine tune the texture here. For every picture you see, I manually adjusted all of these settings to produce the best possible results. 
if I don't use genuine fractals here, while things that aren't faces like the sign in the background end up looking pretty good, faces become completely unacceptable. You have one option here, which is adjusting the smoothness, but I didn't find that adjusting this made portraits acceptable. Maybe it would work better for wildlife though, so let's take a look. First, you'll notice the colors are off. There seems to be a bug that produces flawed DNGs. I had to manually correct both the exposure and the color. I did raise this bug to the support team, so I assume they'll fix it soon, and I'm not gonna hold this particular bug against them. But there are other problems. As we can see, it did actually add a lot of detail, but it sort of made this bald eagle look like it had like long white hair and made it just a little bit too intense. I did find the best use case for On One Resize AI, and that is low resolution landscaped photos. Let's take a look at a scaled down D850 photo. I scaled it down to just 800 by 600 so I could scale it back up. You can see even at this resolution, the On One photo on the right looks significantly sharper. At this scale, it looks much better, but let's zoom in quite a bit. At this scale, again, the On One image looks so much better. If you had low resolution images, images that for whatever reason just weren't sharp, maybe let's take them with an older smartphone or something, on One Resize AI will drastically improve the results, especially if you're making prints and especially if you aren't zooming in like 800% like we are pixel peeping here. That is how to use On One Resize AI. Let's look a little closer. As you can see, these seagulls show significantly better edges, even highlighting their eyes. This looks so much better. The detail on this rock looks totally real. You would not know that this was scaled up. There are some flaws though. As we look at this American flag, we know that these are stars, right? But the AI didn't recognize it as an American flag, and as a result, all the stars just turn into blobs. But the stripes themselves, it did a perfect job of making these blurry lines absolutely distinct. Make no mistake about it, for the right photos, On One Resize AI is amazing. And at $80 or less with this 20% coupon, it is really cool and a great tool. However, I found something better that I'm gonna to recommend to just about everybody, and that is Topaz Gigapixel AI that you can pick up at sdp.io slash topaz. You can get 15% off of the coupon code Northrop. First, let's take a look at the app, and then we'll look at the results. Here's that same photo again, and if we zoom in and hold down the mouse button, you can see the before and after. And again, it's pixelating the before to sort of exaggerate the results, but we'll look at the results in Lightroom in a second to clarify this. You have some settings here, and you can adjust the scale here. But the really cool thing is this face recovery feature. This is what makes this useful for portraits. This app is so smart, it actually recognizes facial features like hair, eyebrows, eyes, nose, lips, skin, and replaces the blurry image you have with actual textures that end up looking super realistic. It is absolutely amazing. Let's get into Lightroom and look at the final results. Even zoomed back, you can see a real difference, but let's zoom in. You can see Chelsea has like distinct eyelashes now. You can see the color of her eyes is correct. Her skin looks natural. I'm absolutely blown away by this result. Look at the improvement on Samantha's face. Now, is it perfect zooming in 300%? No, it's not quite perfect. You can see there's a little bit of extra sort of texture to her skin here that's not really natural. But when I actually made prints, I didn't notice that. Here's one of those flaws that's a little weird and would require some editing. You can see it saw this hair on Chelsea's face, but it seemed to sort of make her forehead furry by inferring that there was more hair there than there actually was. It just got the textures wrong. This should be skin instead of hair. For me, it represents a good start. I would still want to pull this into Photoshop and of course remove that weird stray hair from her forehead. But like I said, I didn't notice that when I just made prints of the picture. Let's look at some more images. This is a heavily cropped image of famous Chris Nichols being super athletic. Even though it's from a 45 megapixel camera, because it's cropped, you can see it's extremely blurry. The gigapixel AI version looks extremely sharp. Now you can see the limits of the AI. Like we know this is the Nikon D850 and that this is the Nikon logo, but it can't read, it can't infer that, and as a result, the text just ends up being a white blur. But look at the detail it added to his sneaker. This looks absolutely amazing. I would not even know this was upscaled. Faces are where Gigapixel AI really shines, but that's so important because what I found showing actual printouts of these images to just regular humans, 
I found that they only looked at the faces. We didn't really care about anything else going on in the photo. As long as the faces were sharp, people were really happy with it. But let's look at that same landscape example. Just like on one, it does a really good job of improving how sharp these images look. But to my eye, it actually looks a little bit more realistic. I don't see the same super hard edges here. Look at how it rendered these rocks. Absolutely perfect. And again, as we look at the flag, it did a really good job of straightening out the bars, but it didn't know the stars were stars, and so they just ended up being blobs. Why is it so amazing with faces, but not so great with an American flag? Well, it has the intelligence to recognize a face, but it doesn't yet recognize an American flag. Now, I actually do see this maybe five or ten years out, where it would be able to recognize an American flag and know that those were stars and it could take images that it has from maybe a 3D render or just other photos and drop them in. I tested all three apps on more than a dozen very carefully tuned photos and I did run into the limitations of Gigapixel AI. It's not perfect. Let's take a look at some really creepy flaws. Here's the photo of Emily from our Photoshop book. Let's zoom in. You can see, okay, just amazing detail, right? But I upscaled that from a downscaled version so that I could compare it to the original photo and we could see really what the difference was between a proper high-res photo and the scaled up version. So let's compare the scaled up version to the original high-res version of the image. Now, if AI were perfect, these would look the same. And indeed, it's really, actually, really close. Like, look how close her hair actually is to the original image. But there are some problems. like. Look at Emily's tooth here. Here, in the scaled up version, AI didn't really see that tooth, and so her tooth just kind of got left out. And look at the way Emily's ear and earrings are. The upper earrings were totally lost, and instead AI gave her a really weird ear shape. In parts of the photo that are not faces, you can see it didn't do nearly as good a job of scaling up. Now I'm going to show you some real family images that I wanted scaled up for personal reasons. This is our Christmas card from 2015, a year when we were really busy and we were too lazy to take a good photo. I set up my Nikon D810 at the time, 36 megapixel images, great image quality, but I didn't set up a flash, so it was shooting at ISO 2500, and I had it horizontal, but the final Christmas card that we sent out ended up being vertical, so it was heavily cropped. Let's see how Gigapixel AI scaled it. The original image is on the left and the Gigapixel version is on the right. Even at this scale, you can see the Gigapixel version is significantly sharper. But zooming in, look at that difference. That is absolutely amazing. This picture was restored. Here's my face back when my hair was gray instead of white. And well, did it render my teeth perfectly? No, it's a little bit weird there. But overall, you probably wouldn't notice that, but you would notice the sharpness. Madeline's face looks so much better. Now, some of the Christmas decorations in the background got a little wonky. You definitely see them as sharper, but some of them look a little bit weird. Here's the thing, when people looked at the picture, they didn't notice the ornaments in the background because they weren't pixel peeping. They just looked at the faces and those looked good and they were completely happy with them. One more picture, this is Chelsea's grandparents. Now, this image is something I scanned in for their funeral, so it has a lot of sentimental value, but the pictures they had from when they were younger were only prints. There were no digital cameras at the time, and necessarily scanning a picture from a 4x6 print ends up being pretty low resolution, but I was amazed at how Gigapixel AI restored it for me and gave me a higher quality image than was even originally possible. Let's look at that. This is the original image and this is the Gigapixel AI. Zooming in, we can see Papa Jose's face looks so much more detailed. Again, look at the difference on Nana Lucy, but it's not perfect. This would still require some editing in Photoshop for me. Let me show you those flaws just so you know what to expect. I'm going to zoom in really deeply here. You can see it decided that there was some hair here that was actually part of her glasses frame. And as a result, she has some weird hair there. Also, look at the frame of her glasses. Here, it confused the frame of her glasses with her eyebrow. And so it gave her an eyebrow that extended down to the bridge of her nose. Is it perfect? No, but I think it's a huge improvement, especially for people who have older, lower resolution images, things like scanned prints. It makes a massive difference, especially with faces. Would I spend $80 on it? Well, minus the 15% coupon for landscapes or wildlife? No, in my experience, I actually didn't see that big of an improvement. I also didn't see a big improvement on portraits that were already sharp to begin with. So pictures I took with a 45 megapixel R5 that I scaled up, 
I really just didn't see any benefit to using it whatsoever. So I would not recommend it if that's your use case. But if you have older pictures, maybe sentimental pictures that you want to bring back to life, absolutely. Gigapixel AI is the one to get. Head to sdp.io slash topaz and use the 15% coupon Northrop to save yourself a few bucks. I bought it out of pocket. I didn't get it for free. I simply paid for it straight out. All of these apps have free trials, so you can experiment with your own photos. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear what your experience has been with similar software and how you plan to use it. Don't forget to subscribe to see lots of tutorials and unbiased, unsponsored reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye.